Aaron Cam reporting for duty. I've been notably absent from adventures recently. I'm in grad school and working full time, so unfortunately I don't have as much time to get out. But this weekend is John's birthday and it's our first time out in our winter uh, hot tent. So here we are making our way to a lake. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Home. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Gray Jay. Come on down. There's another one. Huh. Hey, go knock my berries. I'm filming those. Hey, you. You're adorably what did I just downy. Say about the berries. Because the hot tent's so big, we have to use actual, like, full stakes in the ground to stake it in where we don't have trees. So, uh, this is the first time we're doing it, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to carve some up right now with the saw, and I'll use a hatchet if I have to, but that's what I'm up to now, and we'll see how it goes. Here we have Zamboni John. Just, uh... Just flattening it down until I get the tent down. Yep, that's what I was going to say. Finish my sentence. So cute. I don't think we can use the pole yet. There's no way it's going to self-stand. But how do we know? I think you loosely do, yeah, you do this last. Okay. Yeah. So you can come out. Pull down? Come out with the pole? Uh, yeah, or just lay it down. Looking good. Can you just shuffle off to the side of it? Please? You bet. Huh. I think we might have to bring them in a little. One peg or two? Yeah. See how that's, that should lay down? Maybe it will. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. I think that's fine. These guy lines work well. Yeah, they do. With a little piece of wood. Yeah. Perfect. So we've got it up. We're about to check it out for the first time on the inside. We tried to get it up in our backyard, um, but it was extremely windy and Aaron uh, kind of got carried away by it. <laughs> so this... Oh, yeah, it's a lot roomier inside. Than it is our crib. Outside. Some good real estate. It is some good real estate. And that was, so, like, for, especially for first setup, that wasn't bad. No. It wasn't. <laughs> the clock. 
like the smell of fresh cut spruce. What's that? I was just saying there's nothing like the smell of fresh cut spruce. No. It's beautiful. So close. It's a stubborn one. <laughs> you want me to try? Hang on. Nope. Strong woman. You want to do it yourself. I've got this far. <laughs> it's personal now. <laughs> Just mind your follow through. Yeah. If it goes through. Oh, okay. Good job, hon. I think I got her. Yeah. Well done. Woo. So because the stove is brand new, we're going to uh, run a fire through it for a couple of hours just to let it off gas out here. Uh, the paint on the stove pipe and all that can release gases and it's just stinky if nothing else. So we're going to do that outside, burn that off, and then we'll take it inside for a, a new fire, fire after it cools down. Snow packed in there and it's just uh, jamming it. Yeah. Great day on our log. I love that they travel in pairs. I know. It's so cute. Inauguration. Huh. Wow. Whoops. Surprised how much st uh, smoke is leaking around there. Yeah. Oh, it's probably all the water on the s in the snow. Oh. I think it's just steaming off. Look at that. Yeah. It just popped a little, even already. Yeah. Here it goes. We're just using little small stuff here because we don't want to waste our good wood. That good wood's hard earned. Yippers. Yeah, you can. Uh, I wouldn't go in that smoke, hun. Yeah. Oh shoot! She got that sticker on. Yeah. I love when steel turns that rainbowy color. Yeah. extremely shallow here it's and it's sandy so I don't want to get a scoop full of sandy water so I'm just using this sled as a little platform a little dock to walk out on perfect I'm gonna lean this up so that all the ice uh, and water doesn't freeze on it That's the three-point split. 
So this stove is a Great West Metal Works, uh, 12 by 12 by 24. Um, it's got these removable pot sections so you can really boil water quickly by immersing it in flames. However, my pot doesn't fit and I need to establish some kind of collar here to hold it in place or get a different size pot. But for now, I'll just use these like a burner. It'll boil just like that. Oh yeah. I'm gathering some boughs to put on the floor of the tent and just taking a few here, a few there, so as to not uh, damage any one tree too much. And I'm targeting the balsam fir here. Uh, there's white spruce as well, but I've heard that um, heating up the white spruce needles smells kind of bad. So we're looking for uh, balsam fir or black spruce, but there's not just, well, there's some black spruce, but anyway, lots of both. If we were in a busy park or a well-trafficked area, this is something I just wouldn't do. But up here in the Canadian bush, uh, this is not an issue. There's plenty to go around for everybody. These boughs will just help us keep off the snow, uh, which will keep our gear drier. <laughs> when I open the door, the draw, just makes this thing take off. It's just roaring right now. It's beautiful. We're just burning up junky wood for this, just to uh, get it cleaned off. Amazing. It just rolls around. Smells nice in here, eh? Super nice. So here's what we'll be sleeping on tonight. We got the spruce boughs, this mat, which is mostly just for, to uh, protect our, our pads, a little blanket, uh, which is primarily for the same purpose and a small amount of warmth. We both have liners for our sleeping bags, which add a bit of warmth, but mostly it's just to save the bags so that your dirt and body oils aren't getting all over the bag. I personally almost, I aim to never wash this sleeping bag. It's a minus 20 down bag and I never want to wash it because it just shortens the life of the down. And then Aaron's got this nice Exped Sin Mat uh, Ultralight Winter. It's got an R value of five, I believe. And I've got uh, this Climate Insulated Static V, which is 4.4, a little pillow, wool, um, merino wool base layer, that should be plenty warm, even if the stove goes out later. We're trying to get ourselves more than enough firewood to last the night. Uh, my strategy in the boreal forest is to collect dry standing dead wood as opposed to trying to cut it out like there's just so much of it standing here for a forest is just a tinder box so i'd rather just uh, pick it up than cut it out gathering this nice pile here just from this surrounding area probably took three or four minutes Let's 
nice little hatchet. Okay, let's still do the trick. We're keeping a nice wide stance so our follow through can't hit our uh, feet. This is our hole for our uh, stove pipe and it's just uh, not quite large enough so I'm just going to use my knife and expand each of these a bit so that um, it can fit in nicely. I'm just doing a really small amount at a time uh, and then I'm checking it and then I'll come back and expand if I need but I hate to go too big. Nice. And there's a little spark arrestor here. It's kind of like chicken wire. Keep the big sparks uh, from flying on top of the tent and potentially burning through it. Hold on, that's, no, that's too much. Okay, okay. You got it? Yeah, I'm just positioning the stove. Okay. Leaning that way a little way. Pretty good. That's pretty solid to me. Excellent. You're pretty smart. Like a pretty smart duo. We're lighting her for the first time when it's inside the tent. <laughs> Second light in the fire, but still feels exciting. <laughs> it's probably it's nice to be, be able exciting. to stand in here. Yeah, it is nice. Oh yeah. Erin's using her dad's invention, the Billy Bellows. I'll show it. To get some oxygen down there. Um, and some really discouraging, really discouraging start here. Two ashes just almost burned through the tent on our first light. So that's, uh, that's really disappointing to already feel like you messed up your tent a little bit. And overnight while we're sleeping, that's really gonna take away from my peace of mind that that could happen so easily. Well, we just got another one. And it's just so discouraging to uh, damage something that's brand new and is so beautiful. We're thinking of taking the spark arrestor off. Maybe th sparks are kind of catching on it and having a second to fall, as opposed to just floating up with the, the hot air. Oh, there's a real learning curve here. Mm-hmm. Birthday boy. <laughs> you pop the top off? Yeah. Am I gonna drink it like Gatorade? <laughs> yep. I mean I would. Oh it's cold. <laughs> so our wine is distastefully cool, but in the meantime, we've got some single malt scotch. Normally I buy blended, but it's birthday, so. Uh, and we've got uh, some Baileys in this Bitty Big Q silicone bottle, which is working really well, really airtight. But if we have hot chocolate, we'll have this. But for now, while we wait for the wine to warm, cheers. Some scotch. And you might not be able to see this, but it's around 16 degrees Celsius in here right now. 
and feeling mighty toasty. Mm-hmm. Very, very pleasant. Hello, sir. Thank you. Happy birthday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we're doing pulled pork for dinner. We've got that uh, burner plate off. You can hear when I put it on and take it off, it just roars with the draw. So there's some nice heat hitting that as a result of that opening. And uh, this pulled pork, sweet Asian barbecue pulled pork, is super easy. Just uh, screamed out to me yesterday at the grocery store as I was looking for something for dinner tonight. And you just pour this into the pan and in five minutes you got pulled pork. So it should be fantastic. Got a couple of nice Kaiser buns here. Thanks, hon. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. Mm hmm. It smells good immediately. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a spoon here. Okay. It smells a bit like cat food, <laughs> but in a mostly good way. <laughs> it's gonna be good. How's your wine doing? Oh, yeah, it's, it's warming. <laughs> and it's getting really toasty in here. It's 21 degrees Celsius now, 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We went outside just to kind of tidy up our stuff out there, and it's not that cold out, but compared no. to in here, it was uh, it felt chilly. Mm -hmm. We're spoiled in here. No, it's not cold at all outside. Um, you might be wondering why I'm wearing jeans mm -hmm. and why we're not using snowshoes. The snow is not that deep. The temperature is not that cold. The low today, or the high today, was like uh, four degree, minus four or something. Yeah. And the overnight low is beautiful, balmy. Um, minus 10. Well, minus 10, yeah. So Still it's a nice, nice, nice way to ease into this tent, especially if the, after the scare with the ashes. <laughs> it's nice to know it's not going down to minus 30, minus 40 tonight. It smells good. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. We're now sitting at uh, 26 and a half degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very, very <laughs> warm in here. We just opened this a little bit to vent. <laughs> it's too much. We've, we left the door open a little bit so that this cooks faster, so there's more draw. But we're gonna close it up and uh, control that draw now, substantially, now that dinner is served. A super easy dinner. Mm -hmm. It's really hitting the spot. Well, we've got this much wood for the night, and uh, at the current rate, I think it'll be fine. We're not we're not burning it, you know, just to burn it. We're using it pretty conservatively. Should be enough. Mm -hmm. If it's not, I'm not going to get any sleep if I have to be stoking the fire <laughs> <laughs> every half hour to put some in. Mm -hmm. But no, I think it'll be good. Yeah. So it's 6.23, we're getting settled into bed. Uh, we're gonna set an alarm for uh, every two hours. We're just gonna read for a while, we're not going to bed quite yet, but we're really tired from just basically processing firewood all day. Uh, so we're just gonna read and fall asleep probably pretty early, have a good, nice, long sleep, and wake up every two hours to stoke the stove before it goes out, if it lasts that long. Oh yeah. It's uh, 9.45, slept for a bit and woke up. Didn't sound like the stove was going, but there were still some coals which could be revitalized. That's snow? Yeah. 
It's snowing right now. It's pretty light, but it is okay. Yeah. Can you hear it on the tent? Yeah. Yeah. about 7.30 a.m. Um, we made it through the night. It was uh, pretty good. I set an alarm and it was up about, I set it for over 45 minutes just to put more wood in the fire. Um, it's not actually as annoying as you would think. I slept pretty well. And then, see, from right here I just had it stacked and then I could just reach right over and put it in the fire. So, uh, it went out, I think, at the beginning of the night, we set an alarm for two hours, and uh, it burned down to just coals, so we got it going again, but then after that, it uh, did pretty well, so. Um, Aside from the creosote. Yeah. So, yeah, we're excited. Gonna make some hot chocolate and manic this morning. I'm just getting up. Um, it's not too cold out. I kept the fire running, but it kind of runs down and cools off in here. But uh, so it's about minus three or four in here, which isn't too bad. Is um, it? Yeah. Know. Well, right on the ground too. Yeah. Um, I slept in. I I had my wool, but I didn't need it. I just slept in this. This hat is amazing, and it I just kept it on all night, and uh, yeah, I was really comfy. It was probably close to zero for most of the night, um, but that was nice. So it's nice to be getting up and the fire going. Put the pot on for some hot chocolate, and uh, yeah, and then we'll make some panic. So I do wear glasses, and um, I wear contacts typically on these trips. I wear the type that are day and night that you can wear um through the night i don't love them in my daily life i find they get really sticky and I'm, i don't like leaving contacts in overnight but my optometrist suggested uh for camping it's a lot better than sticking your fingers in your eyes a couple times twice a day so oh shoot anyway i lost one last night which will happen from time to time because i have contacts in so i rub my eyes um so i always bring my glasses with me I often will bring an extra set of contacts just in case I lose one on a trip, but I'm running low on contacts and didn't have extras to bring today. So I'm just going to take out the one that's still in and swap to glasses. Ooh, those are filthy, but yeah. So for trips, I typically do wear the ones that I can just leave in so I don't have to be digging around in my eyeballs uh, with dirty hands. <laughs> We're making manic this morning. Um, I have, so we're doing a half recipe usually, so everything's, this is only two of us, but uh, so about a cup and a half of flour. There's a little bit of salt in there as well, and a, just a touch of sugar. And then um, someone taught me to blend in, before you put any of the wet ingredients, take some lard and like and blend it in and mix it in really well so it's really fine with the flour and then all you do is um, add water to that and then anything else you want we're gonna put in some blueberries and cinnamon today but uh, yeah so we'll see how it goes so a little about this tent it's in the took um, Alaskan is the model 11 by 11 so it's quite large which we got so that we could have company um, here's the problems we ran into last night the burn holes and then the dripping creo seat. Um, so I, I would really want to get uh, an elbow to stick this out even if we have to support it with a bipod. It would be well worth it for the peace of mind. I definitely lost some sleep last night thinking about it. So uh, that's just a no-brainer for me. Wind is picking up a little bit here and we're in a very exposed area which we knew 
Obviously you want to be more in the woods uh, for wind protection. So hopefully it doesn't pick up too much or we're going to have to let the stove go out. You can see here on the pipe where the creosote is dripping down. I think it said creosote in <laughs> outside. <laughs> it's because we just ordered um, Lacrete wood pellets for our pellet stove at home. Uh, so it's a little splattered along here. So that's fine. We don't care if the stove gets dirty, but I just don't want the tent to get damaged. So I'm making, uh, I've got the dough going and uh, kind of make a little bit of a well in here and then add water like that. That's good. And then you just kind of fold it in. I don't actually know why, but that's how I've been taught. And so that's how I do it because I was taught by people who know how to make bannock pretty well. So I figure I may as well just follow their instructions. <laughs> don't fix what's not broken, right? It's a nice earlobe texture now, um, which is what I was taught. You kind of want it to feel like the consistency of an earlobe, which is funny, but I just go with what I've been taught. And we're going to throw in some blueberries. Right in there? Yeah. Not a ton, because i got to mash them in. Um, these blueberries we picked this summer, so they're Northern Ontario blueberries. Mm, the best. And then once you have it the right kind of consistency you kind of need it a little bit I think I've been told you don't want to overwork it too much it kind of will end up stiffening up your bannock and then so I'm just doing it enough to fold in some blueberries for us and then we'll try and get our oil going to fry it up yeah that's Oops. good you know, that's all yep Be a tick one. Mm -hmm. frying them, right? Mm -hmm. so it's like being deep fried. Yeah. So put enough that it can be almost submerged. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's good. How's yours? On point. oil's too hot, what happens, some will see here is it gets crusty on the outside and it's still doughy on the inside. Which, I don't know, might be a bit doughy, we'll see. It's a bit doughy. What if you cut it in half and put it back in? Yeah. Are they thicker than normally would do? No, it's just the, because it's so, I think it's hot, the oil's hotter than, yeah. like normally you keep it on like medium heat. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think this will be plenty actually because they, yeah. they puff up and they they're going to be pretty up. rich. Yeah. Still a bit doughy, but. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you want to oh, it's hot. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hot. I'm going to try it Ooh. on its own. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. That's so good. The cinnamon is so good. Mm-hmm. Mmm. It's like the hottest, freshest biscuit yeah. imaginable. This one has a bit of jam on it. That's so good. It's the best breakfast ever. 
Yeah. <laughs> Best birthday ever. Yeah. Doing a little exploring around camp. We have some time to kill today. It's really nice woods in here. That's so pretty. Just a few flakes drifting down off the trees. Hey, hon. What's that? Just a few flakes drifting down. Yeah. Big tree stump here. And it's amazing how much is going on on a big tree stump like this. Got insects burrowing into it. Uh, woodpeckers looking for the insects. Mushrooms feeding off the decay. Moss, which I'm sure would have been there when it was alive too. Big knots. It's just uh, it's a piece of art. It's a, his history. It's really amazing. Alright, it's time to shut her down. A bit of ice formed on the tent. Not bad. And it seemed to be wherever there's like a lip here. So it's it'll be important for us to keep this upright in the future and taut like that. So it just falls off. But it's loose. It's easy to get off. And there's not too much of it. We're having trouble getting the pipes apart. We're thinking it's minus uh, 14 right now. We're thinking how cold this is going to be when it's minus 30 or 40. Come on, here we go. Good job. Here's what that spark arrestor looks like. I'm not sure if it helps or hinders. I'm not sure if it's really necessary here. What is necessary is an elbow. I really want to get that. Yeah. And now there's creosote on the inside of the pipes and they're supposed to nest into each other. So hopefully that will just uh, brush right off as we slide them into each other. In school, when we did pure altitude testing, they said I should be a chimney sweep, so. <laughs> <laughs> Not far off. <laughs> I don't know if you can see or not, but it's pretty gummy. Okay. Okay. Three. False alarm, maybe. Might be fine. Judging by how hard they were to get apart yesterday when they were new. Yeah. center pole just locks in with these little keys. Simple, we like simple. Simple doesn't break. Three of those, and those all collapse. This is 
some pretty high impact camping, so we're just getting the site quite cleaned up. Getting all our stakes and bows away. And who knows, we might come back here, so we might reuse them. Well, that was a wonderful experience for our first hot tent. Really looking forward to trying it in extreme cold and to adding ice fishing to this uh, to the outing. So lots more to come this winter. the scenes at BOA. I'm ready to take the tent down but we're hanging out for a little bit because camera work takes some time. So John's setting up the shot and we're getting ready to take the tent down. It's BAO. Yeah. BAO. <laughs> what did I say? BOA. Similar. You are cut. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Krieger! Right on! <laughs> 